Hey guys, welcome to the shop. On the same never-ending project of the do-all bandsaw this week. Pull off the whole front of the saw with the vise and stuff attached, and man, that thing is one of the heaviest belt saws I've ever seen in my life, I'll have to have to admit. We pull off the whole vise unit, remake the shaft that goes on the idler wheel for the blade tracking adjustment. Gotta remake that. Then we machine some pockets on the sliding vice jaw that are pretty hard to reach, and they use a pretty interesting tool to, to get that done. I, this project will never end. Thanks for watching, guys. Let's get started. I'm sleeting out here a bit. I'm going to use a set of these cast steel wedges to separate this. Man, I wish I could find another one of those. This one's just so clapped out. Sun faded, where it set outside, I guess, and just probably 30 years of use too. Check that bracket out. Probably 40 pounds. Well, probably it probably weighs 30, but it's packing a, little, a few extra pounds on it underneath. So we've got a project here that we need to make. This is just the shaft that holds the idler wheel that goes on the sliding block for adjusting the blade tension and tracking on the dual bandsaw. Now somebody's went in and modified it here. Um, it used to have a snap ring here, I, I assume, but uh, they had a threaded collar and a set screw in there. Yeah. It, this shaft has some damage here also. It, at one time, looks like it maybe had been driven back. This is not a press fit in this um, in this holder. Now, I did have to press it out because of this damage, which I, where it come from, I just don't know. But anyway, by the time I repaired this, I could have just made a new one. So that's what we're going to do. Got a piece of stock in the lathe, and I made a quick drawing just uh, for ease of use. It's an interesting mix of imperial and metric dimensions, so... Let's go over the lathe 
and uh, see if we can't make that real quick. So this is a piece of 1018, or at least that's what it's labeled. And uh, if I can't get a good finish on this, I'll chuck it and uh, use a piece of 1144. But here's the cutter I'm going to use. I've got 200, uh, a quarter inch to remove off this almost. Um, and the insert that I'm going to be using is a CNMG. This is a Greenleaf Corp holder that holds that CNMG at the, an odd angle, so you can use up the uh, the four sides of the insert that normally don't get used. Um, you can see how it holds it at uh, an odd angle there. But this is great for just peeling. Uh, that's what I use it for, just heavy material removal. Now, I just, I was sent this some time ago, but I forgot to share it uh, with you by a viewer. Let me show you what else was sent um, just really quick, and then we'll, we'll wear this thing out. So this box of insert holders was sent to me by Douglas Huey probably three to four months ago, maybe even longer. I just forgot to show it. Um, in that in this box was that holder that I got in the lathe and uh, you know they're just mostly parts and pieces. Uh, some are missing pieces, some have damaged pockets, uh, some are perfectly fine and just odd. And then there's a few here that are super nice. These two uh, right and left handed Dorian uh, VNMG holders, which I don't have any inserts for, but I've got it written on the board. I need to pick some up. I think it's the 322s. So that's super nice. Those are probably a hundred bucks a piece. And I love that profile. So I'll have to pick up some inserts for that. But most of these are just odd holders. Some really old. Check that old threading tool out. So I apologize for missing this. I've, you know, I do it on occasion, miss stuff that people have sent in. But you get the idea. Uh, nice stuff and uh, what I don't use I'll part out or you know use the shanks for something or just give them away so thank you Douglas I really appreciate that all right so this is gonna be a hundred thousandths depth of cut I'm gonna do two cuts of a hundred thousandths uh, what I think seven thousandths per rev 228 uh, rpm on the spindle so just somewhere to start Speed that up a bit. That's 309. Let's speed up that feed rate a bit. Speed that spindle up. It's 371 RPM. Alright, so this is going to be our big end, so we need to turn this down to an inch and three-eighths, so we're about, I don't know, fifty thousandths right around in there, off, well, yeah, about fifty thousandths off our size, uh, then we'll flip this thing around in the, once we're down to our final size on this, and then work the end here.
So we need to make our groove there. Just using the grooving tool here to reduce the back end of this 30 millimeter section of the shaft here. That little shoulder is what my bearings are going to sit up against. So I'm just using this grooving tool to cut the shaft to its final length and then to reduce that back section down a little just so there's no interference there. When Dewall made the original shaft, you know, they did the same to it. So I'm just uh, replicating what they did.
So that has turned out pretty good so far, considering it is mild steel. A little scotch bright makes a big difference. But I pulled it out of the lathe before I put my snap ring groove in, and it's not a big deal. I figure I'll share the tools with you that I'm going to use to to make that slot. And it's a set of thin bits is what they're called. Somebody at one time said that they were still available. I showed these a long time ago, but I figured I'd share them again. What they are is little little slotting tools or uh, grooving tools from ten thousandths of an inch wide all the way up to sixty three thousandths separated by a thousandth of an inch. So it's a really neat little set. Comes with this little holder and uh, they're made of high speed steel. Just ground exactly like a parting blade but made for really you know shallow shallow work. So let's go get set up in the lathe and cut that groove because that's all that this thing needs to you know and then it'll be done. Take it real easy with these. I definitely don't want to break it. That's it. They work really well. Gotta be careful with them though. It's a great little knife. You can use it like you stole it. And then just replace the blade in it. You don't have to worry about dulling them. Better than a regular pocket knife, in my opinion. For this kind of use, anyway. Watch how easy I can sharpen my pocket knife razor sharp. Easier if I had the right screwdriver for it. But that's why I like these little razor knives. It's like 12 bucks. I got like 10 of them. So this movable jaw has some damage down in the pockets here where the two socket head cap screws bolt to the large T-nut that this thing slides back and forth on. Years of being ran loose. These weren't tight at all when I took them off. And it's damaged the seats down in the bottom. And I think that without fixing these seats, these would probably work loose again, or at least you know, you wouldn't get good contact, and that is all that holds this jaw to the frame of that saw. So I really want a good connection between these, the T-nuts, and this movable jaw. Let me get you a shot down in these pockets, uh, and then I'll uh, explain to you what I'm going to try to do to fix these, because this one would be extremely hard to reach because it's way back up in here. So the, this front one's the same or worse than this one. Hopefully you can see that. Get on that one more. See how bad that is? Years of debris getting down in there between that loose nut and uh, this jaw has really rounded this off. So I want to try to square this bottom up with the sides again. So let's go over to the mill and I'll show you my setup and the tool that I'm going to use to 
to clean those up. So here's the setup for machinist jacks under this vice jaw. Dialed it in with the indicator, two clamps. Here's the cutter that we're going to use. Well, it's actually a two-part cutter. So this will go down through the hole. Remember, we got to machine this pocket from the bottom. So this will go down through the hole. It'll either be in this chuck or in a collet, whichever I decide to do. This is the actual cutter head, which locks onto the shank, locks on with a cam action. And then it'll be pulled up into the into the pocket, and it should machine the seat square to the sides. That's the idea, anyway. Now this is a shop made, but you can get those commercially. But they're really size specific. So. Let me get squared up over one of these holes. I'll bring in. I'll show you the tool a little better, and then we'll cut these two pockets. All I'm doing is lining up over the hole with the dowel. It's as close to the size of the hole as I can get. They're a little wallowed out. And just swap it out for the shank of the cutter. Plenty close enough. And really, this is the only way to get to this hole down in there, otherwise I mean, you'd have to have a really long end mill to, to reach it. So if you've never seen that operation before, it's pretty neat to see machining the, you know, the bottom side of a workpiece or a hard to reach spot. You can imagine that would take a eight inch uh, long end mill that would be all flopping in the breeze. So you come through from the side you can and then attach your larger cutter to a shank. So pretty neat. This one happens to be shop made, but you, know, you can buy them commercially, but they're very, <laughs> Very specific, and I'm sure they're expensive if you buy them new. So, there you go. It uh, worked out really good. That turned out really nice. It's turned out really good. I was already tooled up in the lathe. I just stuck these in there and squared the heads up on them. 
I'm not buying all new hardware for this thing. So there we go. That'll work really well. You know, that'll allow these to pull down evenly on this jaw and uh, make it as strong as possible. But then this T-nut, it's got a lot of wear on it. Uh, so I may have to fit this, depending on how much wear is in the slot on that saw. I really want to keep this movable jaw from moving as much. Well, I want it to move, but I don't want it to cant when it's tightened up. So in the future, you know, I, I have no idea. I may not do anything, but uh, you know, that's an idea. This was this is pretty chattered up. So maybe we'll either clean this one up and refit it, or you know, make a new one altogether. But that'll be. That'll be later when I'm fitting stuff. So there's my thumbnail, and check out that uh, that bracket. It's crazy how overbuilt something like that is. I mean, I know the vice, you know, there's a lot of pressure on this, but that's ridiculous. All of this thing, the whole saw, just built to last forever uh, with any maintenance at all. It's crazy. All right, guys, that's it this week. A lot of a lot of progress, just a lot of painting and stuff. A lot of cleaning. That stuff takes forever. That one big bracket that I pulled off in the beginning of the video probably took four hours, you know, to get all the grime and stuff off of it to a point to where you could even consider painting it. Same with all this stuff, you know. It takes forever. The shaft turned out really good, even though it is mild steel. A little scotch bright well, makes it makes it look decent, even though that stuff's so hard to get a finish on. Still got a lot of parts to make. You know, these sliding brackets got some wear on them. I mean, and I guess, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do it, you might as well. A big project like that just takes forever. You gotta refit the T-nut, uh, you know, made that new, new pin, several things. You know, most of the things I didn't even show that I did that were boring. So, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks for all the suggestions last week on color. Um, I think I'm gonna go somewhere around the factory colors. That, that's just fitting, I think, so we'll see. Uh, but I really appreciate all the suggestions. Some were really awesome, so thank you. So that's it. Send me an email if you need anything. You know, click on my little guy, subscribe to the channel. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers. I appreciate it. So, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.